Good morning, everyone. Please stand and welcome as we gather on this 20th Sunday after Pentecost. We are delighted to have those of you who have joined us in person, and of course, we welcome, warmly welcome those who are joining us now live via our live stream for today's service. Let us pray. O God, for as much as without you we are unable to serve and please you, mercifully grant, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may in this our act of worship, in our lives and in all that we do, direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our opening sentence comes to us from the letter of John. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. Our processional hymn, Jesus Shall Reign. as we gather on this Sunday morning for this Eucharistic service. At this time, I would like to invite uh, all of the uh, Sunday school uh, kids to go downstairs. Miss Fanella is indeed uh, waiting for you down there. We continue our service with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Job. There was once a man in the land of us whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day, the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord. From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth. A blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that people have they will give to save their lives, but stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, he is in your power. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Please remain seated as we recite together Psalm number 26. Psalm 26. The psalmist writes, Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with those who thirst for blood whose hands are full of evil plots and their right hands full of bribes. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be forever. Amen. We remain seated for the second reading. A reading from the book of Hebrew, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1 to 4, and verse 2, beginning at 5. To 12. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact print imprint of God's very being and he sustained all things by his powerful word when he had made purification for sins he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high having become as much superior to angels as he named, he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which he are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere what are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals, that you care for them. You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now, in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, 
for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make their pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. This is this reason Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I proclaim your name for many brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing our gradual hymn, Blessed Creator of the Light. Hymn number 364 in the red hymnal. with you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the gospel of Christ. gather in your presence on this day, as we have been privileged to do, Lord, in the power of your Spirit. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will truly let your ancient words impart its wisdom, its guidance, and its truth upon our hearts. May I speak to you now in the name of God, who is Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is good to see you again. As I said to the 9 o'clock congregation, I know I was only away one week, but whenever I go away, even for a little time, it feels like it's been a while. Maybe, maybe you have grown on me in some way, but it is good. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> it is good to see you. I heard something. I'm not quite sure <laughs> what it was. It is good to be back and to see you all again uh, this morning. Friends, I want to share with you some words from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, 
reading from verse 14 to 15. Mark 10, verse 14 to 15. There Mark tells us that Jesus was indignant, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. And he said, Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. There is a very telling passage in the opening chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. It is a passage which speaks of the guilt of all humankind, all of us, before the living God. So I thought I would begin with this passage and to read it for you at length because I believe it puts its finger on the central issue arising from our gospel reading for today. Romans 1, 18 to 25 reads as follows. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of those who by their wickedness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and seen through the things he has made. So they are without excuse, for though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling a mortal human being, or birds, or four-footed animals, or reptiles. And here is the judgment. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the degrading of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie. And they worshipped and served the creature, that is, things that are created, rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And so this phenomenon of suppressing the truth, of people choosing to believe a lie rather than the truth that has been made known to them, the truth which is available to them to understand, to grasp all around them, this phenomenon of suppressing the truth is not new. It is not new. It is still alive and well in our world today. We have only to look at once again to our neighbors to the south, and even right here, right, in the upcoming presidential elections. I am amazed at how so many people choose to believe lies rather than the truth, or choose to call the truth a lie rather than the truth, even when the evidence to the contrary is right there in front of them. We see this phenomenon alive, alive and well in the lies which undergird or give support to all the forms of prejudice, all the forms of racism that we see at work in our world today. So even though I don't know you from a hill of beans, I will still make certain judgments about you. I will make certain decisions about you based on the untruths or the half-truths which I harbor in my heart about you. That's how we get prejudice. That's how we get racism. But of course, we can trace this truth. We can trace this human phenomenon all the way back to the Garden of Eden in the account of the first man and the first woman, Adam and Eve, 
choosing to believe the serpent's lies rather than God's truth. So the saying continues to hold true. There are none so blind as those who choose not to see. Those who refuse to see. There are none so blind as those who refuse to see. Who choose not to see the truth. So choosing to believe a lie rather than the truth that has been made available to you it describes what is therefore going on inside each and every one of us when we harden our hearts. Now Webster's Dictionary defines the hardening of one's heart in this way. It says, it is when we have stopped having kind or friendly feelings for someone or caring about something. Anyone ever had a hard heart? No? Everyone in here, their yeah. hearts are soft? Ever had a hardness of heart? Yes. When we stop having kind or friendly feelings for someone, or when we stop caring about someone. And we all know from experience how these two things go together, right? We choose to believe some lie rather than the truth about something or someone. And our hearts, therefore, become a little bit harder, a little bit colder. And then we begin to have these sorts of uncharitable thoughts or unfriendly feelings toward that person or that thing. You know, when someone does something wrong to you, there's nothing right they could say or do. It's like you just cross them right off, right? Your heart has grown colder. I shared the example with the... Uh, the nine o'clock congregation, how many of you know about the Grinch? The Grinch who stole Christmas. His heart got smaller. It was tight in his chest. It just got colder and harder. And what he really needed was a little bit of that Christmas spirit, right? To get in there and lighten it up, to open up his heart a little bit more. Right? Sometimes we like the Grinch. But where this becomes, I think, particularly devastating is when it concerns our obedience and our faith in God. When we choose to believe a lie rather than God's truth. And we, get, we begin, therefore, to harbor uncharitable and unfriendly feelings toward God. And we stop caring about the things of faith and about the things that are important to the life of faith. This is, by definition, unbelief. And the writer to the letter of the Hebrews notes, Therefore, as the Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the day of rebellion, as on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors put me to the test, though they had seen my works for 40 years. It's a long time. The Israelites had seen God's works of salvation in delivering them out of Egypt, bringing them through the wilderness, providing for them bread from heaven, water from the rock. But yet they chose to believe that that God was other than the redeeming God whom he had revealed himself to be. And so by their disobedience, they chose not to believe. In today's gospel, Jesus is confronted by a group of Pharisees, the keepers of the law, the ones who are meticulous about following the law, and they came to put him to the test on the question of divorce. Was it lawful for a man to divorce his wife is the question they put to him. And their question, of course, as we know, was disingenuous. It was a trap. It was intended to get Jesus to contradict the law of Moses, those first five books of the Old Testament. They weren't really concerned about the question of divorce at all. They just wanted to entrap him. But knowing the condition of their hearts, Jesus said to them, because of the hardness of your heart, he, that is Moses, wrote this commandment for you. In other words, Moses wrote this law as a concession for the Israelites 
Because rather than live with integrity in the indissoluble one flesh union of one man and one woman in marriage as God had always intended, they found ways to dishonor this union, and usually to the detriment of the wife, right? Finding these minuscule things by which they might put her away or divorce her. So the Israelites' hearts then become hardened in relation to the truth of God and his word. Just as the Pharisees, if you just picture this encounter with Jesus, just as the Pharisees and their hearts had now become hardened in relation to Jesus, who was the living word right in front of them. There was nothing that Jesus could say or do that would make him seem right in their eyes. Their hearts had become hardened toward him. And so after his exchange with the Pharisees, and as he was then discussing the matter later with his disciples, people then began bringing children to him in order that he might touch them, in order that he might bless them. And it is here in this very simple, but yet very profound gesture. In this object lesson, Jesus reveals a most profound truth about our own receptivity to the kingdom of God. The disciples, we are told, spoke sternly to the parents. And he said, they said to them, Jesus has more important things to do. Why are you bringing these children? Right? They wanted to stop them from coming. Perhaps they saw it as a waste of Jesus' time. But Mark says that Jesus was indignant. That means he was angry. He was annoyed by the unfair treatment of these little children. And he said, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. He says, truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Does that mean that if we are baptized as adults, we don't enter the kingdom of God? No. Does that mean that if we are not little children, when we receive God's kingdom, that it's all over for us? No. You see, this belonging to the kingdom of God, it calls to mind for me Jesus' teaching in the Beatitudes on the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 and 3. There he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. For what? This is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who know their need for God. They are the poor in spirit. Who come to God on God's terms. Not on their own. God, I'll follow you, but only if you allow me to do da 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 And we go off with our list. Those who come to God on God's terms and not our own. Who come without false pretenses, but simply in order that they may be blessed by him. But this, he says, is the kingdom of heaven. It is open to one's such as these. And in many ways, children are just like that. I don't know how many of you, I mean, I have two young kids, but I don't know how many of you remember what it was like or have or work with little children, right? Unless or until they are unfortunately taught otherwise by this world's sin, they tend to be very trusting, right? Very believing. If you tell them X is Y, they will believe that X is Y, <laughs> right? Very trusting and very believing. They are willing to receive the kingdom of God. They are willing to receive the will and the way and the rule of God willingly in their lives because they trust and they believe that what God, their heavenly Father, wills and wants for them is truly best for them. Even if in the moment they can't figure out how all the little bits and pieces come together and how they make sense, they trust in the one who calls them and invites them. And no matter how old and gray we become, 
I said to the crowd this morning, every morning I get up, it's like another 10 gray hairs show up. <laughs> they come in and they bring in friends, right? <laughs> but no matter how old and gray we become, until we humble ourselves to this level of trust in God and truly recognize our deep and profound need for God, then we will never enter the kingdom of God. We will never come to be where we need to be in him. We will miss out on the authentic joy and the profound privilege of the experience of knowing that we are living under the gracious rule of the living God. And friends, we will miss out on the freedom that comes from truly trusting him. You know what it is to have to trust that you have to lean on your own abilities for everything? It's a burden. But when we come to him and truly trust in him, it is liberating. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And that's where we need to be. Until we choose to dispel the lies and cling only to the truth of God revealed to us in Christ who is the living word, we will never enter God's rest and peace on account of our own unbelief. And so friends, let me tell you, this is a word for all of us today. We need to guard our hearts against unbelief. And this isn't just up here. This is in our response to God. We need to guard our hearts against choosing to believe the lies we love rather than the truth which cuts. truth revealed by the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. The world, by definition, always thinks it knows better than God. It will always offer very powerful arguments as to why or how other people or things can satisfy our deepest needs. Oh, all you need is to have that career or live in that community, or go to that school, or drive that car, or have that much money, then you'll be fulfilled. It will always tempt us to question whether God can really be trusted. Does God care? Does God know what I'm going through? Does God really matter in my life or not? And as we know, from as far back as the Garden of Eden, some of the best lies are covered up in truth. Right? Those are the good ones. Those are the ones that are hard to detect. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who know their need for the living God. But theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So friends, do not harden your hearts. Come to God just as you are, on God's terms, holding nothing back. Test everything, as the scripture says, by the truth of his life made known to us in the power of the scriptures through the Holy Spirit. And let us as his children simply come to him, simply believe in him, in order that he may touch our lives, just as he welcomed those little children, touch our lives such that we may truly be blessed by him. Amen. Friends, please stand and let us open our hearts to receive the one who brings us truth, the one who calls us to follow him as we say together.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, please sit or kneel as you are able as we continue to pray. As we, gather, as we gather in God's presence to intercede for the church, the nations of the world, and the needs of others, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Vindicate them, O Lord. We pray for those who are suffering through sickness, through loss, without support, in loneliness. In particular, we lift up before you the following members of our congregation and their caregivers. Carol. Carol. Thelma. Thelma. Maureen. Maureen. Joel. Joel. George. George. Clifton. Clifton. Pauline. Pauline. Kathleen. Kathleen. Reuben. Reuben. Nellie. Nellie. Andrew. Andrew. Carmen. Carmen. Felicia. Felicia. Ian. Ian. Pat. Pat. Paul. Paul. Ethel. Ethel. Doreen. Doreen. Rima. Rima. Hyacinth. Hyacinth. Angela. Angela. Erica. Erica. Rita. Rita. And Dorothy. Dorothy. We pray for those for whom members of this gathered community have asked our prayers, especially Benedict Atu. Ida and Ken Bahador, Glenda Bostic, Thelma Chasto, Daniel Christie, Gary Duncan, Angela Eady, Jason Falvo, Gloria Van Lu, Evelyn Greenidge, Portia, Lansdale Guy, Ruthlyn Hoyt, Ngozi Atu, Iyabo Ogandiran, Eric and family, Gregory Linton, Patrick, Vaughn Martin, Heather Maynard, Joseph Murray, Nicolene McKay, Carolyn Linton Miller, Reverend Mark Regis, Cindy, Telsey Kellyman, Denzel Austin and Leopold Austin Jr., Joy Agard Mighty, Patricia Adams, Angela Puopolo, Elizabeth Patton, Dorothy Thompson, Keith Harper, Eva Manifold and Germain, Ora Swaby, Valda and Sarita Domingo, Marielle, Marianne, and Valerie Walters, Shanice Ashmead, Florence Umugbai, Diane Denny, Alyssa, Athena, Latoya, and Ovando. We intercede for those now on our hearts and minds. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Vindicate, Vindicate them, them, O Lord. O Lord. We pray for those who seek justice, who frown upon evil, but are still shunned and persecuted. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Vindicate, Vindicate them, them, O Lord. Lord. We pray for your church, the body of Christ, called and equipped to bring the good news of salvation to the world. In the Anglican Church in Canada, we pray for the Right Reverend David Lehman, Bishop, and for the clergy and people of the Diocese of Caledonia. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the Dean, Council, 
and congregations of the North Region of the British Columbia Synod. Together, we pray for all people and ministries around the world working to address issues of poverty, homelessness, and affordable housing. In our own Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea, for its laity, deacons, priests, and bishops. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Vindicate them, O Lord. We pray for those who feel like the smallest of the small, the weakest of the weak, those who feel ignored and unloved. We lift up to you the ministry offered through our Saints Cafe, and we thank you for this opportunity to reach out to those seen as the least of these, the poor, hungry, and homeless within our community. Strengthen and encourage our coordinator, volunteers, and all who support this work week by week. We pray for all who receive meals, support, and Christian friendship through this program. Grant that your name may be glorified in all that we do, and in the lives of all whom we are privileged to serve. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Vindicate them, O Lord. We pray for those who have been abandoned or abused, who have been neglected and left powerless, who have been limited or rejected. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Vindicate, Vindicate them, them, O Lord. Lord. We pray for the people and nation of Uganda as they prepare to commemorate 62 years of independent rule on Wednesday of this week. Liberate them from all oppression, O Lord, and from all who would stifle this freedom they have in you. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Vindicate, Vindicate them, them, O Lord. Lord. We thank you and pray for those who visit or worship with this Christian community week by week. We give you thanks and praise for their presence with us today. And we ask your blessings in a special way on all those visiting us for the first time today, whether in person or online. Continue to draw children, young families, and others seeking you to this community, that they may experience your power which sets us free indeed. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Vindicate, Vindicate them, them, O Lord. Lord. Take us into your arms, O God, as Jesus did with the children, and bless us every day so that we may be supported, liberated, loved, and accepted. In the name of the one who welcomed the children, amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us therefore confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all that is good, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand now for the greeting of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please extend the sign of peace to those around you.
Friends, please stand as we continue in this time of the offertory as we sing our offertory hymn, Just As I Am. Please stand. pray. God of truth, receive all we offer you this day. Make us worthy servants, strong to follow in the pattern of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer Form 3. Eucharistic Prayer Form 3. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Please sit or kneel as you are able as we continue in this Eucharistic prayer. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation. In calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread 
and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified, made holy by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom, in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, so we are bold to sing. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Friends, those of all ages and denominations who are baptized into Christ are welcome to come and to receive communion at the altar today. If you will not be receiving Holy Communion, I invite you to come forward and to receive a blessing 
simply by crossing your arms in front of you. Our hymns for communion, Break thou the bread of life, He hideth my soul, Since Jesus came into my heart, The Spirit of God descend upon my heart.
Friends, as we continue to sing, I would like to invite those who may wish to come forward to pray for a birthday or anniversary or any other need, concern, or burden that you may have brought on your hearts today. This is our opportunity to pray, and so I invite you to come forward.
Friends, please stand. And let us, in the words of this prayer after communion, let us offer God our thanks and our praise for this opportunity to gather as we have done, to receive all that we have, to offer all that we have, and to know that we are indeed in his presence. Let us pray. Almighty God, may we who have been strengthened by this Eucharist remain in your steadfast love and show in our lives the saving mystery that we celebrate. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you this day and always. Please be seated. Good morning, good afternoon everyone. And welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you who have joined us today. Uh, we are delighted that you are here, and a special uh, welcome, of course, uh, to those who are joining us, uh, either for the first time, if you're here for the very first time, raise your hand so we can see where you are. I think I recognize all the faces. If this is your first time, let me know just in case it's my eyes that are out. Rita, you stretching your arm, or? Yeah, all right. I see someone else stretching their arms. All right, we are happy to have you here, and of course, we welcome those who are joining us uh, also by a live stream. As I continue to say, uh, we never know who's actually watching. I cannot tell you how many times I'm getting comments uh, from folks who are actually watching the live stream, or as some of you may know, um, our parish administrator takes uh, clips from the sermon and from the, from the service and posts them on Instagram and Facebook, and so they're all over the place. All right, um, and so folks are, are, are learning and hearing uh, a lot about uh, Saint Stephen, and so uh, we are delight we are delighted uh, for those uh, who are uh, watching and joining. Friends, as we continue uh, in this week, of course, our usual offerings uh, are available. So join us this evening for evening prayer at 6 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday of this week for morning prayer at 7:15 as usual. Uh, the Tuesday evening prayer and Bible study group uh, continues at 7 p.m. And of course, on Thursday, uh, we continue our study of Job. Uh, this week, we are looking at chapters 4 through 7. Printed copies of the study guide are available at the back. If they're all gone, let me know. I can quickly print some more. Uh, but we've also sent them out electronically uh, to those who would like to have them. If, if you'd like to join us, uh, you're invited to do so. Uh, my hearty thanks to the Reverend Canon Donald Butler, who was with us uh, this last uh, Sunday uh, in my absence. I am grateful uh, for his service. Uh, he responded on very short notice, because uh, I had very short notice that I had to be somewhere else. And so uh, I am delighted that he was able to come and to be with us. He is no stranger, uh, obviously, to many of you in the congregation, and so uh, I'm sure that he fit in uh, quite well. And so. Uh, thank you for, to him, but also uh, to you for receiving him last Sunday. Also, a very special thank you to all those who came out yesterday and participated in the parish cleanup. I was, I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, uh, by all of the faces, all of the hands that were on deck. Uh, if you take a deep breath, you can probably still smell all of the cleanness that is now in the sanctuary. And so we are grateful uh, to Wendy and to her team, all those who came out uh, yesterday to clean. I, I challenge you. You can clap, that's, that's good. I challenge you, if, if, I don't know how good your climbing skills are, but if you try to climb up the rafters, you probably won't even find any dust up there, all right? Uh, they did an awesome job, and uh, we are grateful uh, for their work, all right? Um, Friends, uh, usual notices, our Saints Cafe continues uh, this week, uh, tomorrow noon to 1, and then, of course, Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. As I said to the earlier crowd, as Christmas approaches, it's, it's funny that we're saying that now, but as Christmas draws near, uh, we anticipate that there will be 
perhaps an increased need uh, within our community. And so if you can come and help and volunteer on a Monday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, uh, when we have deliveries, uh, that would be helpful. So please uh, do speak with uh, Patricia or myself, uh, with Winsome, uh, any of those who are usually here during the week, all right? The evening of elegance. Iris, is that why you came forward to give us some details? All right. I will not steal Iris's thunder, Iris. Come on, come on down. You want me to start? All right. Well, friends, I don't know how many of you have gotten your tickets, and so I'm going to ask the question that I've been asking for like the last month. How many of you have gotten your tickets already for the evening of elegance? Hands up. All right, all right. Good, 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 good. I am good. This is good. I am happy to see the hands up. How many of you are still thinking about it? Okay, I see a few more hands up. How many of you are waiting for the last minute? <laughs> well, friends, this is the last minute, all right? Because the 19th is going to be here very quickly. As I said to the earlier congregation, I'm smiling, but I'm very serious. Make sure you get your tickets, all right? This is a St. Stephen Downsview event. We are celebrating 70 years. I do not want to look up on that night and see everybody else who is not from St. Stephen's there and none of the St. Stephen's folks are there, all right? Uh, we know we have friends coming from other parishes and congregations uh, who have heard uh, about the event and will be present. We are happy that our uh, former uh, incumbents uh, uh, will be there as well. So please join us. Iris, go with you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So, as Father Theodore mentioned, we are coming up to crunch time yep. to give numbers to the venue. And we're asking today, I, I'll be downstairs, we're asking today for everyone to um, pick up their tickets. Even if you're not paying for it today, do pick up your ticket or let us know whether you're coming or not. Today as well, we ask that you're seeing me downstairs to select your protein, because again, we have to give numbers to the venue. So I, I, I'll be set up downstairs, I'll be waiting. I, I'm hoping to see everyone. And again, even if you're not paying, do pick up your ticket uh, uh, and let us know, okay? Let me just see if I missed anything else. For those who have purchased online, they can pick up their tickets at the door. We'll have them ready for them at the door. And if they want, to, whoever wants to call in to select their protein as well, they can call in, but they need to do this by at least Tuesday the latest for us to let the venue know the different menu, the different um, dishes that, or the different proteins that we, we, are, we are selecting. Okay, any questions or I'll see everybody downstairs. I'll see you downstairs. So if I, if I take my ticket from you, okay, I can't come, but I still have to pay for that ticket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I guess I just said that. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the question again for those who didn't hear. So Bev is asking that if she got her ticket today, but if she's unable to attend, does she still have to pay for it again? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. At least I'm not left on this. All right. <laughs> so there you have it. I mean, right. I mean, sometimes there are, there are unfortunate right, events that, that happen, but we are asking folks to make that commitment. Uh, and so uh, if, even if you know, perhaps you can raise a donation to cover the cost of your ticket if you're not able to attend. But we are encouraging you uh, to let us know because we, of course, need to let the venue know. And of course, those costs will have to be uh, covered once we do that, all right? So uh, please do so. Yeah. Okay, so it's gonna be a live event, friends. We have live uh, steel pan music from Gemini Pan Groove. I'll help you, Iris. You know, I love, I love, it's okay. This is what I'm here for, all right? So steel pan music is gonna be there, all right? You're welcome. And uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, so I encourage you uh, to be there. I'm going to give a little heads up. So in terms of the proteins, you have chicken breast and mushroom cream sauce. Why am I reading this? Because I want to know what I'm going to eat. Beef sirloin and red wine gravy. Mm, sounds good, right? Salmon and lemon herb sauce. 
And then, of course, we have vegan and vegetarian options as well uh, for those who, who will be there. So see Iris downstairs, get your tickets. We had a couple of commitments uh, from the 9 o'clock service uh, this morning. Uh, the 19th is coming, okay? That's a Saturday, which means that the 20th is also coming, which is a Sunday. So I'm going to be taking attendance. So Sunday is going to be interesting, right, when I do my roll call, all right? So if you feel any pressure, good. But I, I anticipate uh, that we will all uh, be there, all right? Um, yes, question in the back. Hang on, hang on. I want to make sure I hear your question clearly, Joe. Yes, Joe, go ahead. Oxtail and curry goat. Oh, my. Oxtail and curry goat. <laughs> Jollof rice and fried rice. Listen, not at this shindig. Maybe at another shindig, we will incorporate all of those things as well, right? But I mean, we, we have lots of opportunities to enjoy some good curry goat and oxtail. Hold on, let me turn off the mic, because the... <laughs> See, y'all gonna make me misbehave today. All right, um, there will be opportunities for all of that, but uh, that, is, that is the menu. I wish it could be even broader, but that is where we are. Alan, go ahead. Is this about the menu? Okay, go ahead. Welcome. <laughs> we are delighted to have you here uh, today, Mr. Walters, all right? And, and welcome, welcome, all right? Maybe you can join us at the Evening of Elegance, all right? If you're able, all right? So friends, uh, please do uh, come on out. All right, so I'm gonna jump over to the walkathon and I'm gonna ask uh, Nadine uh, maybe just to make a couple of comments as we, as we go forward. And again, uh, thank you to all those who walked and those uh, who sponsored uh, those who walked uh, at this year's walkathon. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'll be really quick so you can go downstairs and buy your tickets for the evening of elegance. <laughs> um, so, the walkathon, uh, thank you very much to everybody who participated and um, the sponsors and the participants, because obviously we wouldn't be able to um, be successful in this event unless there are folks who stepped up, took sheets, um, collected sponsors, and um, for those of you who, you know, um, didn't walk, but um, were, sp were sponsoring someone. Um, the day was a success. There were approximately 22 walkers. I was a little bit late um, to start, so most people went ahead ahead of me. I will blame my spouse, but you know, we'll just leave that right there. <laughs> Uh, so, um, t-shirts as well for the walk. There are many people who have purchased. Um, I think we sold over 55 or 60, oh, wow. close to 60 um, t-shirts. We have about 36 left. Oops. Um, there are sizes from small, medium, large, extra large, and double extra large. There are very few large sizes left. There's about two of them. Um, but we have available uh, in other sizes. So if you still want um, T-shirts, uh, please come and see me. If you still have to pay for your T-shirts, please do so. I'll be around after the service. Um, and just uh, thank you again to um, those who provided and prepared um, uh, food for our our luncheon or brunch, sorry. Um, I don't want to call names because I know I'm going to forget somebody and I'm going, I'm going to be terribly upset about it. So there are people who made meals, um, you know, provided items and it was, uh, that too was a success. It was the first year we did that. So our bellies were quite full at the end of the walkathon and for to Black Creek as well for sponsoring the t-shirts and also for facilitating the health screening that we had afterwards. We had our blood pressure and our blood sugars checked. So that was kind of interesting for those of us who ate um, after <laughs> we, um, before we had them checked. And just quickly, um, a reminder to the um, persons who took sheets that um, if you are able to please um, submit them next week, 
Um, if you can, obviously we can talk about that, but I do want to close the books on this as soon as possible. Um, and I believe that's about it. If you have any questions, obviously, um, you can come see me afterwards. And thank you, thank you, thank you. This was one of our main um, fundraising events for our 70th year um, of service here in the Downs View community. And I appreciate everybody's support for uh, this event. And we'll see you next year. Come yes. out and walk. All right, and thank you again, Nadine, uh, for your efforts in coordinating our walk this year. And so as we said before, the funds that are raised from this walkathon will go to support one of the small projects that we have uh, identified in the 70th year of our celebration. So please uh, do support. And for those who would have received um, sponsorship, particularly from those beyond this parish, uh, as you complete your, your walkathon sheet, make sure that you have uh, their, their names and addresses if the amount donated is more than $20 so that we can issue uh, tax receipts uh, for them as well. So make sure that you have all of that information as we go forward. All right, so thank you once again. Um, coming up, our next service of Holy Baptism will be on November the 3rd, uh, being uh, All Saints Sunday. If you know of any little ones or adults who would like to be baptized, please let me know as soon as possible. Uh, we will have a preparation session uh, within the next uh, two weeks, uh, so please do let me know as soon as you can, all right? Uh, also coming up again as, as Christmas draws near, we're just right early October, but December will be here before we know it. Uh, we will be participating once again in the Angel Tree Christmas uh, program. I've posted a flyer uh, just on the red bulletin board at the top uh, if you'd like more information. But this is our opportunity to provide gifts, as you know, to the children of those uh, who are incarcerated and therefore separated uh, from their parents. Uh, so please, uh, if this is of interest to you, we're asking uh, for your support again uh, this year. All right. Um, birthdays, we want to remember those who are celebrating their birthdays. Uh, Oluko Key and Daisy Wilkes uh, celebrate today, the 6th. Um, peace, right, a peace, peace uh, celebrated his birthday on the 3rd. So belated happy birthday uh, to you. Uh, Matthew, where's Matthew? Matthew's, Matthew all smiles, uh, along with Beverly Ross and Valerie Walters, who is not here, but Valerie's daughter is with us. I will be celebrating tomorrow, so Matthew, it's not too late to bring the cake. <laughs> bring it in, all right? Uh, Catherine Walters will be celebrating along with uh, Norma Hutchinson on Friday the 11th. Anyone else celebrating a birthday, anniversary? Well, hold on. So if Bev's birthday is on Tuesday, are we having oxtail or curry goat? Because, you know, I, I, could, I could find my way. Sorry, tomorrow, yes, of course, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow. Anyway, let me know. We, we usually say we can talk. We can talk offline about that. All right. <laughs> All right, can we sing happy birthday, David? <laughs> Blessings to you all as you celebrate the occasion. Friends, uh, so we do have our guest book, uh, right? So during the cleaning yesterday, the, 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 the guest book was unearthed. Uh, and so uh, for our guests, for those who may be visiting with us uh, for the first time, please uh, be sure to sign our guest book so that we can uh, keep in touch with you as well. All right? Please stand as we sing our recessional hymn, Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Number seven.
to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.